a warm welcome to one and all in this video i am going to explain that unit sets under classical methods of analysis the objectives of these units are titration curves under monoprotic and polyprotic acids bases indicators used in that various types of titrations and masking and demasking acids the ph titrations result shows that it's a titration proceeds initially the ph rises very slow keep on adding base into that acid solution gradually it is increases ph till the visibility of the equivalence point means it is neutralized the ph of the solution rises rapidly from ph 3 to ph 11 and all the indicators which have ph range between 5 and 11 or suitable for the titrations of strong acid with strong base just we are going to take a simple example regarding to that ph titration curve it is a typical ph titration curve for strong acid and strong base depending on the various concentrations of sodium hydroxide here sodium hydroxide is a strong base hcl is a strong acid in this titrations noted that strong base against a strong acid is handled with same manner except that strong base is in excess before the equivalence point and strong acid is in excess after the equivalence point just to see here keep on adding into that base what happened to all the base and acid is react to give equivalence point again keep on adding base into that acid again we are getting a different curves here means the ph is rises the solution slightly turns to into that basic in nature this is the ph titration curve for strong acid against strong base in this experiment we have to use 100 ml of 0.1 molar hcl and 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution in the other curve it is sees that here 100 ml of 0.01 molar hcl versus 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide how it a titration of weak acid with strong base the acetic acid is an example of this weak acid and sodium hydroxide is an example of this strong base here the acetic acid 
react with that sodium hydroxide to formation of a neutralization reactions to give a what equivalence point to give equivalence point that equivalence point is calculated with the help of what x is equal to v minus sorry v into n a by n b yet v means volume of acetic acid n a means sodium hydroxide n b means sodium hydroxide n a means normality of acetic acid by using this equation we have to find the what normality of equivalence point of acetic acid versus sodium hydroxide here the acetic acid being a weak acid it is not 100% dissociated and the concentrations of h plus in this case the concentrations of h plus ions is given by the relation the square root of dissociation constant of weak acid means acetic acid here ph is equal to minus log concentrations of h plus is equal to minus log concentrations of k of acetic acid here after addition of sodium hydroxide into that acetic acid to convert a proton of acetic acid to its conjugate base means acetate ion ch3 coo h plus oh what we are getting h2o plus ch3 coo minus that is called what acetate ion here any solutions containing a weak acid its conjugate base is a buffer for conjugate base is a buffer for which the ph of solution is calculated by anderson's equation with the help of this anderson's equation we have to calculate the ph of the solution what is the anderson's equation here ph is equal to pka plus log concentrations of acetate ions by concentrations of acetic acid at the equivalence point the millimole of acetic acid initially present and the millimole of sodium hydroxide added or identical once that all the acetate ion is react with that sodium hydroxide to formation of that equivalence point here poh is equal to minus log oh minus ion is equal to minus log excess of sodium hydroxide since at the equivalence point ph is more than 7 any indicators which has ph range above 7 may be used what are those example of this indicators phenolphthalein thymyl blue may be used for this purpose because the methyl orange cannot be used as its ph range lies is in between 5.1 and 4.4 means below 7 a typical ph titration curve for the titrations of weak acid against a strong base or mentioned here just to say this diagram it is the titrations of this acidic acid means weak acid versus strong base like sodium 
hydroxide next we look at that titrations of weak base with strong acid weak base means ammonium hydroxide is an example of weak base ammonium hydroxide is an example of weak base and strong acid means hydrochloric acid is an example of this strong acid here the weak base and strong acid strength or equivalence is calculated with the help of this formula here x is equal to nb into v by na here nb means the strength of base any means the strength of acid any means the strength of acid and x means equivalence point we means volume of hydrochloric acid here ammonium hydroxide is a weak base that is titrated with that strong acid like hydrochloric acid here completely dissociated to get the concentrations of oh minus ions that is calculated with the help of this anderson's equations here poh is equal to pkb plus log concentrations of ns4 plus uh, divide ns4 oh at the equivalence point at the equivalence point the reactions of ammonium hydroxide with hcl is complete the predominant ions in solution is nh4 plus ion which is hydrolyzed to give an acidic solutions here the concentrations of nh4 is react with that water to formation of ammonium hydroxide and H plus ions. The pH of the solution under this condition means seven, where concentrations of ammonium hydroxide is the equivalence point. The result shows that equivalence point, the pH is less than seven. It is necessary to use an indicator. with a ph range on the slightly acid side such as methyl orange methyl red bromophenol blue or bromothiamyl green etc neither thiamyl thiamine nor phenolphthalein can be employed as an indicator in the case of weak acid versus strong base the ph titration curve for this titration Just to say here, it's a weak base versus strong acid. The curve is generally obtained like that. Here, these are the representations of pH titration curves for 100 mL of 0.1 molar ammonium hydroxide versus 0.1 molar HCl of weak base against strong acid is shown in that figure. Next titrations for weak acid with weak base. The weak acid is acetic acid. Weak base means ammonium hydroxide. Let us consider the titrations of VMl of acetic acid of strength N A with ammonium hydroxide. then in b the ph at the equivalence point is given by ph is equal to half pkw plus half pka minus half pkb here 
कि ये एंटीबी और दी डिसोसिएशन कांस्टेंट ऑफ वीक एसिड और एसिडिक एसिड एंड अमोनियम हाइड्रोक्साइड रिस्पेक्टिव ए टिपिकल पीएच टाइट्रेशन कर्व्स ऑफ वीक एसिड अगेंस्ट वीक बेस इज शोन इन दैट फिगर ये वी हैव टू टेक 25 एमएल ऑफ n by 10 acetic acid means 0.1 normal acetic acid titrated against here n by 10 ammonium hydroxide solution the chief features of the curve is the change of pH near the equivalence point and also during the whole of the titration curve is very Gracious. There is a no sudden change in pH and hence no sharpened end point can be found with any simple indicator. Thus, the pH of the equivalence point, the pH at the equivalence point will be almost 7. Means it is neutralized. Means it is neutralized. The that is the concept of this what weak acid versus weak base. Next we discuss the what are the factors determining the exact form of pH curve. The exact form of a pH curve it depends on whether acid or base is strong or a weak electrolyte. The molarities of the solutions used in the titration. These two are very important factors. The above factors may give rise to the following pH curve. The pH curve obtained by titrations of strong acid with strong base. The pH curve obtained by titrations of strong acid with a weak base. The titrations curve, the pH curve obtained by Titrations of weak base with a strong acid. pH curve obtained by titrations of a weak acid with a weak base. If either acid or alkali is weak, the parallel part of the curve becomes shorter as compared to strong acid, strong base curve. On the other hand, if both the acid and base are weak, the range is usually non discriminable, that is not easily set. For acid base titration, the primary reaction involved is the neutralization reaction. Once that acid is completely neutralized with base, it gives the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, the pH of the solutions will be less than or greater than or equal to 7. It depends on the hydrolysis of the salt formed. In that titration of a strong acid with a strong base, the resulting salt is not hydrolyzed by water and the pH of the solution at the end point would be equal to 7. The titrations of a strong acid with a weak base, the resulting salt is hydrolyzed by water and pH at the end point will be less than 7. The titrations of weak acid and a strong base the resulting salt is hydrolyzed by water to give a basic solution and pH at the end point will be greater than 7. Next, what are that redox titrations? In that redox titration simply that is called oxidation reduction titration. The process of addition of a standard solution of an oxidizing agent from a burette to a conical flask 
which contains known volume of the solution of a reducing agent that is reductant is called oxidemic. While the reverse process, the addition of a standard solution of a reducing agent from a burette to a conical flask which contains a known volume of the solution of an oxidizing acid is called reducimetry. Both the process involve transfer of electron from reducing agent to oxidizing agent that undergo redox reaction. Here we have to use the primary standard solutions. The primary standard used in such titrations as follows. Oxidant primary standard like potassium permanganate, potassium bromate, potassium iodate. These are all example of this oxidant primary standard. The reductant primary standard, sodium oxalate, arsenic oxide and pure ion the properties and behavior of some important redox reagents are tabulated in the table the potassium permanganate is a very good oxidizing agent ceric sulfate and potassium dichromate chromate bromide the reducing agents are ferrous sulfate, arsenic acid. These are all the very good oxidizing and reducing agents. What are the way of locating the end point for redox titration? There are mainly two ways to locate the end point. One is visual method by using indicator and another one electropotential method. In that visual method, there are three steps of visual indicators used to signal the end point in a redox titration. Self-indicator. Some of the titrants themselves act as indicators because they are highly colored these are called self indicators for example potassium permanganate it is a solution has dark purple color during redox titrations of potassium permanganate with ferrous sulfate in acidic medium potassium permanganate is the oxidant is taken in a burette and ferrous sulfate solution taken in a conical flask. During the titrations by dropwise addition of potassium permanganate solution to ferrous sulfate solution, the pink color gets discharged because of the formation of colorless means Mn2 plus ions has MnO, MnO minus is reduced to Mn2 plus by the reductant Fe2 plus ion. The reaction is follows like that. In the second one, the specific visual indicators, there are certain substances which react with the specific oxidized or reduced species to produce color. Such substances are used as specific visual indicators. For example, freshly prepared starch solutions can be used as specific visual indicators for idometry and idometry titration as discussed below. In that idiometric titrations, it refers to titrations with a standard solutions of iodine with sodium thiosulfate. 
Na2H2O5 solution. As iodine is insoluble in water, its solution is prepared in potassium iodide solution. Because of the formation of water soluble potassium triiodide, Ki3. Ki its reaction with sodium thiosulfate as follows to formation of this tetra thiocyanate ion. The list of substances determined by idimetry one is H2S, SO2 minus, SN2 plus, arsenic, and N2, H4. In that idometry, it refers to titrations of iodine liberated in a chemical reaction. In this method, a known volume of oxidant is titrated with potassium iodide solution in acidic medium. And the iodine produced is titrated with standard sodium thiosulfate solution taken in the burette. Here ito acts as oxidant, thiosulfate acts as reductant. The reaction is called redox reaction. What are the some examples regarding the that iodometry titration? A standardization of sodium thiosulfate solutions by using potassium dichromate solution. In that sodium thiosulfate is standardized iodometrically by potassium dichromate and by adding potassium iodide solution in acidic medium. The following reaction takes place. Here potassium permanganate it undergo dissociation to formation of 2K plus and CrO2 minus plus 16 H plus plus 6 electrons gaining what we are getting 2 Cr2 3 plus plus 7 H2 O. This is what the standardization of sodium thiosulfate by potassium dichromate. Here iodine complex. Iodine is easily complex with starch to formation of Iodine starch complex, it is a what? Blue complex. A standard solution of potassium dichromate is prepared by accurately weighing K2Cr2O7. Hence, 6 electrons are involved per dichromate ion and an equivalent weight of than the normality of sodium thiosulfate solution be determined by the law of titrimetry. What are the reasons for not titrating sodium thiosulfate directly with potassium dichromate? That is the very important reasons. The strong oxidizing agents like potassium dichromate oxidizes thiosulfate to sulfate. Whereas the oxidation state of sulfur is higher than that in tetrathionate. The reaction between dichromate and thiosulfate is not stoichiometric. The reaction between dichromate and thiosulfate is not stoichiometry. The thiosulfate ion has tendency to form complex with strong oxidizing agent. The oxidizing power of strong oxidizing agent is destroyed on the reactions with iodine and equivalent amount of iodine is produced which 
all react stoichiometry with thiosulfate for which a satisfactory indicator exists. Estimation of copper by iodometry. The copper can be estimated iodometrically by the reactions of copper sulfate with potassium iodide. The following redox reactions occurs with copper sulfate. Here copper sulfate, hydrated copper sulfate. To liberation of sulfur dioxide and water, what we are getting? CR3+. To balance the equation, the copper is treated with that iodine to formation of cuprous iodide with liberation of I2. These are all the redox list of substance determined by iodometrically. These are all the name of the indicators, the nitroferroin, ortho, dianisidine, diphenylamine, methylene blue, natural red, ferroin, paranitrodiphenylamine, diphenylamine sulfonic acid, 4 ethoxy 2,4, diamino azobenzene, 1, and nopal 2 sulfonic acid iodo indophenol indigo tetra sulfonate these are all what name of the indicators generally we have to use in that redox reaction and what is the selection of the redox indicator generally the we consider example, iron with cerium sulfate, the potential at the equivalence point is found to be 1.06 volt. Referring to table 2.5, 1.46, sorry 1.06, 1.06 means here paranitrodiphenyl amine. Next 1.14, that is what ferroin, because Pale blue to red. Like that way we have to select that. Like that way we have to select that indicators. In that electropotential method, how to determine the concentrations of solutions by electropotential method? In this method, electrode potential X of the solution is measured by addition of an oxidant to a reductant and vice versa. A graph is plotted between X and the volume of the titrant. There will be abrupt change in the vicinity of the equivalence point. A typical redox titration curves for titrations of 100 ml of 0.1 molar Iron solutions with 0.1 molar titration cerium sulfate solution as shown in the figure. Just to see here what is the shape of that redox titration curve for that Fe2 plus and cerium 4 plus. The value of N, the number of electrons involved in redox reaction. Thus, the iron. Iron curve is steeper than the thin thin curve. Flatness of the curve increases with the increase in the value of n square. The standard potential of the two oxidation reduction system that are involved and upon the equilibrium constant of the reaction. What is that complexometric titration? In this process of addition of standard solutions of a ligand from a burette of a conical flask, 
which contains a known volume of the solution of an analyte, especially metal ions. The ligand is the substance that has at least one pair of electrons. Like the nitrogen, sulfur, oxygen atom in its molecule. And it acts as a Lewis base, means electron pair donor. Metal ions act as a Lewis acid. And the reaction involved between them is called complexation reaction. The ligand donating one lone pair of electron is called monodentate. Two or more lone pair of electrons that is called what multidentate ligand. If two donor atoms are there bidentate, if three donor atoms are there, tridentate and so on. These ligands are called chelating ligands as they form chelate means to ring structure. Thus, the complexes involving multidentate ligand are called metal chelates. The monodentate ligands like ammonia are rarely used as titrating agent because a sharp endpoint corresponding a stoichiometric complex is generally difficult to achieve. However, the multi-dentate ligand capable of complexing with metal ion forming 5 or 6 members chelate ring can be used in complexometric titrations because stoichiometric complexes corresponding to sharp end point are formed. The complex formed should be soluble, undissociated and stoichiometric for which of the following conditions are required. A suitable ligand Experimental conditions such as temperature, buffer or pH are to be maintained suitable for optimum titration. Selecting a suitable method for dictating the end point of the titration. The most widely used chelating agent for complexometric titration which satisfies the above conditions is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid simply that is ADTA which forms a strong 1 to 1 complex with metal ions for any charge. The next concept theory of complexometric titrations involving ADT. You see the structure of EDTA that is mentioned in that figure 2.7. The structure 1 is preferred to structure 2 since it has been shown from measurement of dissociation constant that two hydrogen atoms are probably held in the form of Zwitter ion means both positive and negative can be represented as H4Y as it has four ionizable protons. It has six bonding sites the four from carboxylate group and two from amino group providing six pairs of electrons and ants act as a hexadentate ligand forming stainless five membered rings. The resulting metal EDTA complex in which EDTA form a case like structure around the 
divalent metal ions is shown in the figure. This is what the case structure prevents the formation of complex other than one is to one stoichiometrically. The EDTA it undergo simply written as H4Y which ionizes to give H3Y minus H2Y2 minus Y3 minus Y4 minus as follows. Yet the ligand it undergo different ionization in nature. This is the formula to calculate the what stability constant of this metal complex K dash is equal to Kx. These are the standard values they provided from that literature 4.9 into 10 to the power of 8 and 5.5 into 10 to the power of minus 7. Just to see here, on what log k value, dissociation constant value, metal ions are working with respect to p. The study of EDTA complex formation taking disodium salt of EDTA and effect of pH. For practical purpose, the disodium salt is preferred as standard solution. This is because this salt has distinctly higher solubility than EDTA and avoids extensive hydrolysis as compared to tetrasodium salt. For other metal ions, the reaction may be expressed as in general from the above reaction it is clear that one mole complex forming ion. The stability of the complex depends on the H plus ion's concentration. At low pH, according to that lead chart case principle, the equilibrium shift towards left and as a result the complex becomes less stable. It is thus concluded that the stability of the complex decreases with pH decreases From this table they mentioned that what is the minimum pH range at which different or metal EDTA complexes exist that 1, 2, 3, zirconium, hafnium, thorium, bismuth, iron. The pH range from 4 to 6, the metals like Pb2+, copper 2+, zirconium 2+, cobalt 2+, nickel 2+, manganese 2+, iron 2+, aluminium 2+, and cadmium 2+, stannous 2+. The pH range is in between 8 to 10, the metal ions like calcium, strontium, barium and magnesium. What are the way of locating the end point? Only the visual method using indicators to mark the end point for complexometric titration is discussed here. The indicator used for complexometric titrations are themselves chelating ligands, acids, and ends are known as metal ions indicators. What are the summary of these units? In this unit 6, 
to so how to learn the titration is a procedure for carrying out a chemical reaction between two solutions by the controlled addition from a burette of one solution to the other allowing measurements to be made throughout the reaction for a reaction between acid and a base a titration is useful for measuring ph at various points throughout the reaction a titration curve is a graph of ph as a function of the amount of titrant either acid or base is added the equivalence point of the titration is the point at which exactly enough titrant has been added to react with all other substance being titrated with no titrant left over in other words at the equivalence point the number of moles of titrant added so for corresponds exactly to the number of moles of the substance being titrated according to the reaction stoichiometry this is the conclusions of this unit 6 in this unit the important questions are there what is that in titration of strong acid with strong base both the titrant and analyte are strong be ionized in the fill in the blanks this is the very short answer type question define titration distinguish between titrant and titrant distinguish between end point and equivalence point what is mean by titration error what do you mean by an indicator define standard solution define primary standard give at least two examples of primary standard what is mean by standardization these are all very important questions for your examination the long answer type question is also there reasoning type questions etc okay in that next session we will discuss with unit 7